We talk about retinoids a lot and how it's magical for your skin, but do not fear retinoids. Don't fear the purge. Don't fear the irritation that comes with it. Yes, there are some people who can't tolerate it, but we'll talk about strategies to support your skin barrier during the beginning process of getting into a retinoid, whether it's a retinol, a dapolene, or tretinoin. So let's jump into this video. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Daniel Sugai. I'm a board certified dermatologist in Seattle. Been on YouTube for the last five years. Thank you guys for your engagement. Today is an important video because we talk a lot about these really fun products like Olay Retinol, Rock Retinol, CeraVe, Resurfacing Retinol Serum, and most recently I've been using Avenz Retinol, the retinaldehyde. Very nice product. They have one specifically for around the eyes as well. There are times when we have trouble with the skin irritation that comes with it. And we see a lot of TikToks of people having their skin pretty wrecked, irritated, inflamed, peeling, cracked when starting off on a retinol. And they're all saying that they're regretting starting it. And I feel bad because I want to know if they're using these correct strategies to support the skin barrier during this retinization process in the beginning. That irritation you're feeling doesn't mean your skin is failing, that it's a failed process. There's no failure involved in that. It's an adaptation process. So this is completely normal, especially in the first three weeks on starting your retinoid. And we talked about over-the-counter retinoids can include retinol, retinaldehyde, like we said, Aven, the retinol, Maylove's Moonlight Night Serum is a retinaldehyde, Naturium's made a retinaldehyde. There's also a Dapolene 0.1% gel, which is great for mild to moderate acne. And then there's prescription retinoids, like the stuff I prescribe, tretinoin, tazeratine, triferritine, Adapalene 0.3% and a few others. So we'll be talking about retinoids in general, which is a vitamin A derivative that works on cell turnover, which is a good thing. Helps with hyperpigmentation, also helps unclog your pores, helps with fine lines and wrinkles by boosting collagen production. And there's so much science and evidence behind this. So this is why I talk about this magical ingredient all the time on the channel. But the biggest turnoff is there is a little adaptation process and people are scared to start it. So this is a very important part of my appointment with patients when we start off. I always counsel them this way. So imagine your skin barrier being a brick and mortar wall here. We have the bricks being your corneocytes or keratinocytes and you also have lipids that support them and glue them together. We have ceramides that are part of the glue and we talk about CeraVe a lot because they have their three essential ceramides in them and you see ceramides and other products as well other brands that use it because it's very important cholesterol lipids those are all things you see in your moisturizers a lot you know the skin barrier plus by skin fix has that triple lipid plus their peptides for elasticity and collagen boosting properties but their lipid complex is to help support the skin barrier so what retinoids do temporarily is that it will disrupt this epidermis, the first line of defense. It can actually thin it out temporarily and cause it to be a little leaky. So we're gonna have more transepidermal water loss and we're gonna lead to dry skin plus irritated skin. And this is a normal process called retinization. And we're getting accustomed to this increased cell turnover in the skin as well. Retinization usually lasts about two to six weeks. And what your skin is doing is learning how to upregulate proteins and enzymes that help metabolize retinoids. And they also rebalance the lipid synthesis process as well in your skin. So the key is not to quit, but to support your skin through this process. And let's talk about two of my favorite moisturizers here. Number one, La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm can be BOM, which is the EU version, or BOM, which you see in the US, B5, which is Panthenol, Provitamin B5. It's great at having both moisturizing and hydrating properties, but what I love about this is that it has shea butter and matacasoside, which has wound healing properties. So while your skin is pretty much raw and irritated and it's losing water, it's like a wound essentially. So what we wanna do is support that skin barrier while our body's trying to adjust to retinoids and trying to metabolize them in the skin and try to boost lipid synthesis to help seal off that brick wall that's become dilapidated temporarily. All right, so I always tell patients don't give up too soon, but there are some people who after three weeks cannot tolerate it or they're having really severe redness, peeling, cracked, painful skin, 
that's when we say you might not be able to tolerate the retinoid and you have to go down a few steps in potency. So going from adapalene 0.3% to 0.1 or going from tretinoin to adapalene, tretinoin being much stronger than adapalene and more irritating, you might have to downgrade your strength. Tazeratine too. Tazeratine I can't tolerate and I go down to tretinoin. Everyone's different. This is not advice, medical advice, but this one is my favorite for supporting the skin barrier. So while you're having irritation or dryness or just a little peeling from your retinoid, apply your Cicoplast Balm after your retinoid and then you're also gonna be decreasing your frequency of how often you're using your retinoid in the beginning. I always say start off two to three times a week for the first two weeks, see how you're doing. Moisturize for sure after you apply your pea sized amount of your retinoid and also on the days off, you're gonna be moisturizing twice a day and Cicoplast Balm is fine. Only thing is, it's quite thick in the beginning and it can, takes a little bit of elbow grease to get in. So just use a pea sized amount at most of your Cicoplast Balm. The other moisturizer that I appreciate that's very gentle, when I have dry irritated skin, I have no idea what else to put on besides Vaseline, is the Avan Cicofate Protective Cream to help soothe the skin and repair the skin barrier. It minimizes redness as well and it's very soothing. So those two, I would recommend while you're going through this retinization process. So this is how you go about your retinoid. I just got Cosrx's uh, retinol, 0.1% retinol. Really excited to try this one out. So I'm gonna demonstrate to you at bedtime. I always say at bedtime, apply your retinoid. I know there's some retinoids that are stable in the sun, but I say just in general, let's keep it at nighttime. All right, so you're gonna get your pea sized amount of your retinoid onto your fingertip after cleansing, but you also don't want to have really damp skin. You wanna just pat dry gently with a towel or you're gonna air dry for you know an hour or two. I do that, I actually shower and I get home from clinic. After dinner, before bedtime, I'm gonna apply onto clean skin just a pea sized amount of my retinoid. So this is a small pea, you can go a little bit big, go a little bit bigger. Then I break it up into two. I start at my forehead and then I go to my nose because those two areas can definitely tolerate it and then apply onto your face. Connect the dots. I keep my retinoids outside of the orbital bone here. I don't wanna put it on my eyelids. You can put less around your mouth when you're starting off because this is where you're definitely gonna peel if you are gonna peel. And then also on the cheekbones, I get quite sensitive there. So I definitely start on my forehead, my nose, where I get the most. Then I go down to my cheeks and around my mouth and I connect the dots, okay? And then after that, you just let set in for about a minute feels like it's set, you, don't have, you didn't miss any spots, and then go ahead and apply your moisturizer over that. Just a small amount, okay? Pea-sized amount. Voila. Okay, I just finished working out at the gym and I washed my face and I wanna show you a different strategy of how to apply your retinoid. If you have very sensitive skin or if you're afraid of having that irritation, this is what you do instead. If you wanna do the retinoid sandwich, I find that a lot of people, my patients included, have success with this. And if you're having dry peeling of the lips or around the mouth, around the cheekbones, like I do in the winter time, this is what you do. First start off with a layer of moisturizer onto clean skin. So I just wash my face. You could do, like we said, the Cicoplast Balm. If you're worried about clogging up your pores because that is a thicker texture, go with a lighter weight moisturizer, the CeraVe PM Facial Lotion. This is a nice option. Or even the Oil Control Gel Cream if you have oilier skin. Or if you really wanna work on the skin barrier and you're feeling pretty raw, and you like Cicoplast, they have a Cicoplast spray B5 with the matacasticide and panthenol. So you can start off with this, do a little spritzing over the face. Hmm, refreshing after the gym. Now this is different from having damp skin when you apply your retinoid. This is actually going on like a moisturizer. It feels like it's hydrating my skin, it's soothing. It's gonna help repair the skin barrier with the matacasticide and the panthenol. So you have that layer on, then go ahead and start applying petrolatum or some kind of ointment to the lips or on the eyelids and the, and the nasal labial fold because really guys, we don't need retinoids sitting in that crease. And I find people get like a raw red crack in that crease there. So get petrolatum or even ask your dermatologist 
for a cute little sample of petrolatum, whether it's a CeraVe healing ointment in a little jar, or look at this cute little Vaseline. Go ahead, I got big bombucha Vaseline here. Apply a little bit around the nose. You can apply on the lips, get in the corners there. And you can apply the corners of your eyes, the canthus, medial canthus, lateral canthus. You can even get it on the eyelids, just the thinnest film, because you don't want to get clogged up pores and lead to milial cysts on the eyelid, so just a small amount. But people do find that their tretinoin can diffuse towards the eye, causing dry eyelid, dermatitis, irritation, cracking. And so you can put this as a barrier ointment to protect the eyelids. La Roche-Posay also made a Cicaplast for lips. It has a nice cool applicator. You can go ahead and apply that on the lips instead. And then get your pea size amount onto your face. So I know last time I used the CauseRx Retinol 0.1%. Now let's try the Retinaldehyde Cream Serum by Naturium. Retinaldehyde, as you guys know, is more potent than retinol theoretically because it only requires one metabolic conversion step to become active retinoic acid to go in the cell, the nucleus, and bind to the receptors to do the magic. Retinol has to be converted to retinaldehyde and then retinoic acid, so theoretically less potent. So now that we are so good with our sandwich, we did the first layer, now we can go ahead and apply the magic stuff here. So I love the color of this because it reminds me of the May Love Moonlight Serum, Night Serum, look at that yellow. Kind of matches my Hawaii hoodie there. Break it up into two. Dots on the face. And connect the dots. Staying outside of the orbital bone. Really like treating the temples where I have old acne scars. Can help with that as well. Ooh, that feels great. So even if it's more of a serum, more of a lightweight serum, the principle is the same, pea size amount. And then follow up with your favorite moisturizer, whether it's the lightweight stuff we talked about, the Cicaplast Balm. I'm in my late 30s, so I wanna use a peptide containing moisturizer. Here's the OS1 Peptide by One Skin. This is a face supplement, just to seal it all in and get a little bit of a collagen boost, remove those old senescent cells. We talked about zombie cells where you have cells that are just party poopers that came to the party and aren't really having fun. They're just taking up space. They're not dividing. They're not increasing collagen or fibroblast activity. They might even be spewing negativity at the party, being party poopers and a bunch of eors by releasing inflammatory cytokines and damaging our collagen. So what the OS1 peptide does, it helps clear those out. Ooh, feels great. Feels so good. So there you have it. That's the sandwich method there, whether it's retinaldehyde, adapalene, or tretinoin. So after several weeks, your skin barrier will actually strengthen. I know temporarily in the beginning, it was weakened, you're having transepidermal water loss, but you're gonna increase ceramide production and have a strengthened skin barrier where that brick and mortar wall is rebuilt. And this is why the adaptation process is so important. You get through that, people start noticing their texture, tone, fine lines start to improve over time. It takes about two or three months for your adapalene or tretinoin to xeratine to work on your acne, four to six months to work on hyperpigmentation and six plus months to work on fine lines and wrinkles. It's really important to talk about how to tolerate your retinoid because I don't want you getting turned off in the beginning and saying, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I got the purge like everyone said on TikTok I would and I need to stop now. There's a difference between adaptation and intolerance. There's some people who can't tolerate retinoids no matter what. Never use a retinoid, by the way, if you're pregnant. But everyone else could, could try to do it, especially if your dermatologist advises or recommends it for you. But intolerance is in the realm of, I would say, like contact dermatitis. It could be either an irritant contact dermatitis or even an allergic contact dermatitis where you just getting swelling with the redness and peeling. And that is more of a serious concern where your dermatologist needs to see you to treat you with topical medications to bring down that inflammation as fast as possible so you don't get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or even some unevenness to your tone that could become permanent, especially if you're skin of color. So if you're in doubt and you're trying a new product, always think about patch testing if you wanna apply it to the sides of your face, to your neck, and then using it for a week and seeing if you have any irritation with it. If you're doing well, then you can say that, hmm, probably not allergic to any of these inactive ingredients, and you can go ahead and use it on the entire face sparingly and using the retinoid 
sandwich method, but always, even if you're an advanced user, always moisturize after your retinoid, okay? And again, don't use if you're pregnant. All right, so like we talked about, Aven, Cicofate, and La Roche-Posay Cicoplast are my two go-tos if I'm in doubt and my skin is just wrecked. Go ahead and consider those as your rescue moisturizers when times get rough. Even if you're trying a new exfoliant, niacinamide serum, I don't like those, but a lot of people are still using them, or some kind of toner. Hope you guys like this video. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave some comments on how you manage your retinoids. Can you tolerate every night? Can you only tolerate every other? All right guys, hope this video is helpful. Peace.